This week on Big Red's Cooking, we make fish and chips. Hi, and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. As always, I'm Big Red. So, Easter weekend is coming up, and with that is Good Friday. And if you know anything about Newfoundland, and not just Newfoundland, but really particular Newfoundland, and I'm sure this is coming from the UK, our UK roots, lots of English and Irish folks here, it's going to be about fish and chips on Friday. I know in St. John's where I live, there's one fish place in particular, Chess's Fish and Chips, and they're sort of famous for it. And I remember reading an article a couple of years ago. They will have anywhere but they'll have about 25 staff in there. They'll go through several tons of potatoes and several tons of fish just on that one day alone. And it seems like everybody wants to eat fish and chips on Good Friday. So I thought this was the perfect time for me to do a fish and chips video. Now what you'll notice when we watch this video is I'm going to do a classic St. John's Fee and Chi with D&G. That's fish and chips with dressing and gravy on top of it. So I'm going to make a really quick, simple dressing, very easy to make. I'm going to show you how to do a breaded fish. I'm not a big fan of the batter. I find the batter tends to absorb a lot more. The oil is a little bit greasier and things like that. I find going with a breading, you get a really nice crispy coating on the outside that doesn't absorb as much oil. And it's my own personal favorite. Now, I will probably down the road, I'll show you how to do one with a batter because I know some people prefer batter. But for today, I'm going to do it all with the breading. I don't go a lot into the French fries, but I do have other videos all about French fries. I'm going to ask right now, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to my videos. Really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow the, that audience and I'm trying to grow my subscription base. And if you, if you do enjoy this video at the end, please go ahead and share it on your social media. But you know what, that's enough talking from me right now. Let's jump on over to the workbench and we'll pick up over there. All right, so I've already got my fat turned on because I want to get that preheating. And I want to make sure that that's nice and hot when I'm ready to put my fish in. I'm actually going to start with my dressing though. I've already got my gravy pulled out. There's a little bit of leftover gravy I had in the freezer. I never throw that stuff away. So for my dressing, I just keep it really simple. This is going to have three, four ingredients, I guess. Some butter and onions, a little bit of flour, or breadcrumb flour. And of course, good old fashioned savory. Got to have that Mount Sio savory. So there's nothing special about this. I'm just going to dice up my onion. And if you've not seen it, I do have a great video. I'll show you how to properly dice up an onion. And maybe I'll link to that one at the end. So of course, I gotta have my cast iron pan. So there's nothing, again, nothing special about this. Just a little bit of butter into our pan. And let that melt down. Of course, I gotta put my peels into my compost. Now while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and get my breading station all set up. And I say breading because that's what I'm going to do. I'm not a big fan of batter on fish. I find it tends to get really greasy and it sucks up a lot more of the oil. So what I've got here, I've got some just good old fashioned breadcrumbs. These are really nice and dry. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pulse these in my little mini food processor. Because I want a really, really fine breadcrumb. So when I'm done with this, this is going to be more like a powder than it is the crumbs. So there you go, I've got some really nice fine bread crumbs there. So that's going to go into that bowl. So we can see those are really nice. So there you go, our, well, our butter is all sizzling up nice, so I'll go ahead and throw my diced up onion into my butter. Mm. 
Now, next thing we'll need for our breading station is we need a little bit of an egg wash. So I got about a quarter of a cup of milk there and I'm adding one egg into that. I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a really good whisk together. Go down that one. And the last thing we'll need for our breading station, some flour. So this is what we refer to as a standard breading station. So we'll start with our flour, then we'll dip into our egg wash. And what that's going to do, that flour is going to allow that egg wash to, uh, to really sort of stick on. And then we'll dip that into our breadcrumbs and that'll go right into our hot fat. So our onions are starting to look nice. They're a little bit translucent. I can smell the sweetness of that onion. So I'm going to go ahead and add my savory right in on top of this. Now, if you've never done that, this is a real trick to making a really good dressing. Whether you're putting this on top of your french fries or whether you're actually going to be using this for a turkey, always fry that savory in that butter. You know, if you've ever watched any of my videos before, I've talked about the importance of adding dried herbs. What that's going to do is that's going to activate those essential oils and those herbs, which is where our flavor really comes from and pull that flavor out a little bit better. And we got our breadcrumbs here. And again, there's nothing special about these breadcrumbs. It's just some breadcrumbs I had in my freezer. I like to use the leftover. You know, I tend to buy hamburger buns, hot dog buns. I just don't end up using them up, uh, you know, before they start going stale. So they just go into the freezer, and when I've got enough, I make up some breadcrumbs with them. Now, since this won't be going into the oven, you know, this is not going to be a dressing for a bird at all. I'm just going to end up letting this cook for a few minutes onto that pan, in the pan here. You know, so we get a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. And it doesn't sort of have that raw breadcrumb type taste to it. Now I said four ingredients. I think really I should have said six because I'm going to want a bit of salt and pepper in this. Tasty. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to set this to the side. So that was pretty good timing. I was just able to slide my oil back from my burner. We're just about up to temperature here, and this will be about the perfect amount of time for me to get that fish ready to go in there. Now, of course, as I've said before, you need to take real caution. If you're going to be deep frying on top of the stove. I've got my candy thermometer here which allows me to properly maintain my temperature and know where I'm cooking at. And I've got my fire extinguisher there at the handy. I do not recommend doing stovetop frying like this though. I do recommend using a proper deep fryer. Alright, so. This is some cod I actually caught last year that I have here. And what I've done is I've actually put it onto a paper towel. So I wanted to make sure it's drained out a little bit more. You know, anytime we've got frozen fish, it tends to pull out a little bit of liquid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of a seasoning with some salt and pepper. And we'll go ahead and we'll just Roll this into our flour, and then we just give this a really good coating with our breadcrumbs. Now what I tend to like to do is actually do a double dip 
with the breadcrumbs so I can make sure I get a really good coating. After I've rolled it in the breadcrumbs once, I dip it back into my egg wash and right back into my breadcrumbs again. I'll do that. It's just yeah, we're up to temperature. Just slowly put that in. And I always like to, basically what I do is I start with my thickest pieces and work down to my thinnest pieces. Since those thick pieces are going to take a little longer to cook anyhow. Alright, come on, at the kitchen. Dogs always looking for crumbs. So the best indication of when this is done is that it starts floating to the top. So I've got a few pieces here that are starting to float. I know these are done. I'm just going to go ahead and pull these out and let them drain down. You can see you've got that nice dark golden brown color I'm looking for. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw together a really quick and very classic tartar sauce. So I like to have a little chopped parsley. right into our bowl. So that's going to give a real nice brightness and flavor to our tartar sauce. Get the last of my fish out. And give that a moment to come back up the temperature now before I get my fries in. And then I need a couple of gherkins. And a lot of people use relish. But I like to use the gherkins. Right on in there. And of course, we gotta have mayonnaise. And a little splash of lemon juice. That's gonna thin it out for us and gonna give us that tartness we're looking for. And there you go, as quick as that, that's done. My oil is nice and hot, so I'm going to go ahead and put my fries in here now. And those are fries that I'd actually pre-cooked earlier today. And really, so if, again, I have actually, I did a video a while back all around a homemade Big Mac. And I showed the whole process of making french fries in there. And it's no different than the taters I did to my Big Mary video. So if you want to go poking through, you'll probably be able to find those. But basically the principle is we want to cook them first at a low temperature without really getting any color development. And then we finish cooking them, we do a second cook on them at a much higher temperature. And that's what gives us that really nice crispy fry that we're looking for. And of course we've got to have lemon wedges. So one nice little trick to get a better lemon wedge, what we want to do is if we cut away our center, it's going to make it much easier because now we've got a nice open section along here that's going to make that lemon juice so much nicer. Right, so our fries are looking pretty good here now. So we get these out of the oil. Of 
course fries right on the oil. Need a little sprinkle of salt right away. Go ahead and put those right onto our plate here. Now since I'm doing this with dressing and gravy, I guess I gotta get a bit of dressing on here. This is our fish. Got our lemon wedge just put back on. I actually had to take my tartar sauce off. I just didn't have enough space on that plate. Little gravy right over the top of our fries and our dressing. There we go. Squeeze that back. Nah, I ain't gonna bother trying to squeeze that on that plate. But I'm so excited to be eating this. So you know what? Let's as always let's just let's jump right on over to the counter because I want to tuck into this right away. Doesn't that just look absolutely fantastic? Let's go ahead and give this a little taste. So good. So you can see there's not too much to do on a really good breaded uh, fish and chips. You know, I love the breading. It's just nowhere near as greasy. It gives you a little bit of crunch. It's light. Now I will do one down the road. I do have a good batter that I use, but I wanted to do this one with the breading. You know, fries, super simple, really key thing. Select the right potatoes, do that double cook. You know, check some of my other videos out where I talk about cooking French fries. Gravy, well, not much no gravy. A little bit of dressing on top of that. You know, try and make that tartar sauce as I made it. You'll be really, really happy for it. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. You know, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. But you know what? If you don't, go ahead and make fish and chips anyhow. You know, it's a great sort of classic pub food. It's very simple. And it's something you'll just really enjoy making. So if you haven't done so already, I'm going to ask you again, please hit that subscribe button. Please make sure you hit like on this video. Please share it on your social media. I'm trying to grow that you know, subscription base of mine. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, keep sending the ideas in and keep tuning in. But more importantly, keep eating some good food. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.